We know there's a good deal more to weight loss and good diet than just calorie control, but that message has been very difficult to convey, and it seems almost counterintuitive, if not unfair, that one person can eat a particular food with no significant detriment to their weight, and yet another would have to exert caution with that particular food and portion size. Frankly, from a physics perspective, the concept that all calories are not created equal almost doesn't seem to make sense. But what we have to appreciate is how an individual's body interacts with those calories will differ from one person to the next in exactly the same way that one person might naturally have a greater muscle mass and thus benefit from the strength which comes from that. Another person might lack that same level of absolute power but may have a higher level of endurance. So we appreciate our bodies are different. Similarly, with regard to diet, we need to recognize that also means different fuels will affect us in different ways. There's a new study in Nature Medicine with a weighty title of The Effects of Personalized Nutrition Programs on Cardiometabolic Health, a Randomized Controlled Trial, which can essentially be reframed as does the personalized diet from the Zoe app Work. Professor Tim Spector, the co-creator of the Zoe app, has been at the forefront of democratizing this idea of personalized nutrition, which frankly has been the sort of revolution that's been needed in the public rather than the academic and clinical nutrition space for the last 30 years. It was the sort of thing that we were talking about when I was at university 20 years ago. The approach to our personalized diet is becoming increasingly relevant due to the excess of processed food, which is contributing to the makeup of the modern diet and the effect on how that processed food affects our physiology and our relationships with food. However, it's one thing to have a good hypothesis as the Zoe app does, albeit supported by a strong scientific rationale. It's quite something else to have that hypothesis supported by a randomized controlled trial validating their approach. This seems to be something that has been confirmed today via this Nature Medicine article looking at personalized dietary advice. In the Nature article, they compared standard dietary advice against a personalized dietary program, largely because the study was funded by Zoe, but the results clearly demonstrate a positive improvement in a group of fats called triglycerides. Additionally, they saw improvements in body weight and a metric of uh, diabetes, the HbA1c. They also saw diet quality and the gut microbiome improve. All of these are significant to improving our future health outcomes, especially as we've seen in the study that 2.3% of body weight was lost over 18 weeks. I mean, most people will be very happy with that as an outcome. Now, it's vital to highlight that this study does not suggest the personalized diet plan is a miracle intervention. Several other health markers they looked at, blood pressure, glucose levels, insulin levels, and other proteins did not change. However, there were also no adverse events, and as no medications were being prescribed, these have got to be positive wins. And, you know, Guided diet changes have to be considered success for the patient and the teams doing these interventions based upon this outcome. Obviously, there are many co-founding factors in a study like this. Not least, as mentioned, this study was funded by the Zoe team, which is a huge marker of bias. An equally important one is the issue of intervention bias, whereby having this personalized approach means that active participation alone is more likely to promote change in the study group compared to the control group who essentially were given a leaflet with standard advice. However, I think it's important that we highlight the end point here, that the patients in the personalized nutrition group overall had improved health and improved health surrogate measures. So I would argue that regardless, the intervention is of value here, not least as it moves away from the negative approach and the calorie restriction, which is the core of many diet interventions we have at the minute. Frankly, I personally view this study as a stronger outcome that the NHS should look towards this personalized approach with dietary advice and other aspects of medicine, but particularly with regard to dietary advice rather than that one size fits all. We currently have a health emergency in the UK. 26% of the population are classified as obese. 38% of the population are considered overweight. We do already have targeted event interventions with regard to diabetic programs, specifically Desmond referrals for early diabetes, and those do have 
positive outcomes for patients. But to quote an often deployed public health quote, you know, this study, again, I know it's funded by uh, Zoe, but the outcomes, we really should be looking at allocating funds to stop people falling in the river in the first place, rather than spending money to pulling them out. So I'm not saying go and buy the Zoe app. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I am saying is look at the way they have approached. Look at the whole idea of personalized nutrition. Talk to your GP. Ask what it is that you need to change on a personal level rather than just generic diet advice. And if that means asking for a double appointment so you can take the time to have that conversation, then do so. As a doctor, I want to help my patients and I want to be able to take the time to help them because actually I'll save time in the longer term with regard to improving their health outcomes. So if you want to have a look at the study, I'll put it in the links down below. Um, if you want to have a look at the Zoe app, I'm not going to put the link there because this is not a sponsored post or anything like that. Um, but have a look at what their outcomes are. With that in mind, take care and I uh, hope this has been useful. Cheerio.